afternoon, everyone. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. A few of you were in the my map session. Um, a few of you have met before at Geo for Good, so really good to see all of you back again um, in person. My name is Devja. I am a program manager on the Google Earth Outreach team. I've been a part of this team for the last five years. Um, this is my fifth Geo for Good summit. Um, yeah, really excited to see all of you in person. Um, today, I'm going to cover storytelling with Google Earth. Um, mainly what we're going to do is um, we're going to learn about um, creation tools in Google Earth. We're going to go through a few use cases and a few examples. Um, I'm also going to walk you through the best practices of how you can make a compelling story um, using the power of maps and data visualization. Um, then last, we're going to um, go into a hands-on activity where I am going to teach you how you can build your own story um, using creation tools. Um, and then we're going to um, go through some examples of patterns like you who've um, built their own stories using creation tools and um, get inspired from that. And then we'll leave the last 10 minutes for Q&A. Okay, so... Um, just to give you a quick overview, I think all of you are already familiar with Google Earth, so this is not um, going to come as a surprise to any of you, um, but just to walk you through like a brief history of Google Earth and how the product has evolved. Um, it was launched in 2005 um, after Google acquired it um, from Keyhole Incorporated. Um, in 2020, 2012 was when we first launched historical imagery, which is something that um, you know, a lot of you love and have grown to use um, quite often in Google Earth Pro. Um, in 2017, up, up until then, we only had the desktop version where you had to download Google Earth um, on your computer to use it. Um, in 2017, we launched a web version so you could just access Google Earth with um, a simple URL visit and we also launched Google Earth for mobile. Uh, with that, which has been one of our biggest updates till date, um, we also introduced a new feature called Voyager, and I'm going to um, introduce, introduce you to some really cool examples from Voyager uh, today because Voyager is really where um, storytelling began with Google Earth, um, and people got, our partners got really creative in terms of um, the possibilities of what we could do with maps. Um, and in 2019, Two years after we launched Voyager, we launched the ability for users like you to create your own Voyager-like stories. Um, and yeah, we've seen some really amazing examples come up of partners using these tools. So yeah, just to recap, um, the current versions of Google Earth, we have Google Earth on web, we have Earth on mobile, we have the pro desktop um, version. For the sake of today's presentation and today's demo, we're going to be focusing on the Google Earth on web. And uh, the primary tool that we're going to cover today is creation tools, which, um, like I mentioned, was um, a way to allow users and organizations to create rich visual story maps um, and really use your own content, be it like um, your KMLs or be it your own um, data layers or your own place marks and polygons and um, build your own story from scratch. So just to walk you through some of like the top features of creation tools, and obviously we're going to do a hands-on activity later um, in this session. Um, first is that you can access this feature in Google Earth web. Um, and it's not just storytelling, but you can think of it as collaborative map making um, through projects. Um, it works similar to Google Docs or um, Google Drive or Sheets, where you can actually invite other users to um, create a story or create a project with you. And um, like My Maps, it is easy to use uh, map making tool. It's a no code environment, although if you are feeling adventurous, we've seen an amazing um, community member, Josh Williams, who has done some amazing work with um, maps and using custom code, HTML, and um, CSS is also supported. So you can really, um, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, if you are tech savvy, you can go and um, add, do fancier things with these stories. But for beginners, it's really like no knowledge of code is 
um, needed when it comes to creation tools. And lastly, there is a built-in presentation mode so that it's not just about um, creating your story, but if you actually want to use this as a replacement to your PowerPoint, um, you can um, go into presentation mode and you can actually walk your users through um, a guided tour or a guided presentation. Okay, so um, today, um, before um, you know, we cover the best practices in the tutorial, what I really wanted to start with was um, on a note of inspiration and what, what better place to seek inspiration than you know, the hundreds of amazing stories that um, we've put in a lot of labor and love into building into um, Voyager. And just to recap, for those of you who are not familiar with Voyager yet, um, Voyager is a curated collection of different types of content. We have quizzes, we have data layers, we have um, guided tours and collections that um, we've collaborated with leading partners like PPS, Nat Geo, um, and we've built these stories in conjunction with them. So there's a lot of um, custom engineering work, there's a lot of um, behind the scenes sort of um, data upload and map making and um, Voyager is really sort of the aspirational level when it comes to thinking of how you want to create your stories. These are also um, stories where an editorial team was closely involved to make sure that the content's engaging. So we're going to draw some best practices from these examples to really make sure that um, you're able to tell the most compelling story that um, you can to your audiences. And if anyone wants to access Voyager, you can visit g.co slash earth slash Voyager and check it out for yourself. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do next is just walk you through a couple of different types of Voyager story examples. Um, the first one is a guided tour. Um, which I would, I would like to think of it as the original Voyager content type. Um, these were some of the first stories to show up in the feature. Um, it really takes the audience on a very rich um, visual tour of a space or a location. In this case, um, in, in this example, it um, takes the audience through a journey of the Okavango Delta in Africa, um, where you can, along with Nat Geo, really explore these spaces um, through a combination of different different data types, um, be it like um, Im immersive, um, you know, 360 degree panorama images or um, you know 3D images. Yeah, um, the next type is a little more interactive. Um, in um, I think in 2019 we introduced um, this new feature on Voyager called quizzes. Um, so it's not just about consuming content and reading content, but you can actually engage with your users in an interactive manner. Um, and um, the educator, Josh, that I was telling you about, he actually has um, found out a way to uh, you know, make a template so that you can create a quiz on your own without having to um, you know, do a lot of coding. But yeah, this was a great example um, authored by Atlas Obscura of um, all the natural wonders um, compiled together. Um, in a quiz format and you know, a user can select an option and then if they um, get it right, um, you know, they see like a, a quick information tidbit and they move on to um, you know, like a, a, a 360 uh, degree or street view image of, um, of that location. Yeah, um, next, and this is a really exciting one, and um, towards the end of my presentation, I'll also touch upon how you can build um, a custom data viz layer on your own um, in Google Earth. Um, but yeah, this was a cool exercise that we launched a couple of years ago where you can find um, timely and relevant um, data sets from authoritative sources. You can think of um, sea surface temperature or um, you know, weather-related data sets like hurricanes or glaciers. Um, and even like um, scientific data sets like seafloor sea, sea depth and um, age. Um, and basically you can see them as like a global zoomable layer where you can really zoom into any location and you can um, you know, toggle between a few different data options and really compare and get a global view of um, some of these variables um, across the globe. And last but not the least is um, collections. So if you go to Voyager right now, there's a great um, collection of street view imagery that we already have. And what we've done is we've compiled them thematically. So another 
um, great sort of example for you to think about when you're thinking of your story is if there is a common attribute or a common tying factor that you want um, to use to um, tell your story or to tell your, to build your narrative. Um, this um, really uh, interesting example was called Underwater Earth because there was a compilation of all of the um, underwater street view imagery that we'd collected. And um, it really gave the audience like an up close way to check out some of these, um, ch check out the um, underwater wildlife and check out, um, you know, some of these underwater landscapes. And yeah, last but not the least, in 2021, we um, made our biggest update um, to Google Earth, which is where we launched time lapse in uh, Google Earth. This is again similar to the layers that you saw previously, uh, global zoomable. Um, video which displays a time lapse not just in 2D but also in 3D, which is the big difference from um, the time lapse that you're already used to seeing in Earth Engine. Um, which yeah, it, it's it's um, time lapse data from 1985 to 2021, and you can zoom into any place to see how that place has changed over the last 37 years, and um, yeah, see firsthand our environmental impact on the planet. Okay, so um, that was it about Voyager. I hope you're already thinking of different ways in which um, you know you can get your data together, um, especially when when we're talking of location data. It's really important to have a common theme that ties um, all of the uh, location data that you're pulling together through. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to walk you through some best practices. These were actually. Um, um, covered and drafted by uh, the Voyager team, the same editorial team that is responsible for a lot of the amazing content that you see um, in Google Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each of the um, best practices. So um, yeah, these are um, the top five, and I'm just going to leave this up for a minute so that you can read and take this in. And we're just going to start with the first and the most important step is really um, reflecting on how you want to structure your story. Um, this is something that I already um, sort of hinted at when I shared examples in um, the previous section on um, you know, how there are different types of Voyager stories. Um, so really, this is a place where you think deeply about what is the central narrative that ties all of your different locations together? Is it just going to be more of a list format where um, you, know, you can display it as a collection? Maybe it's a list of like the top restaurants, or um, you know, it's a list of all the project sites that your organization is working on. Then um, structuring it as a collection makes a lot of sense. Uh, versus is it a guided tour? Do you actually want to walk your users through um, a theme or a problem statement or um, you know, just a, a virtual walkthrough of a physical space? Then you can think more of the guided um, story type format. Um, and that's really just like the broad level theme that you want to think of. Um, next, you also want to think about um, what the ideal number of slides are um, in terms of um, Introducing your problem, um, then you want to dive a little deeper into um, giving examples to support the problem or the issue that you're talking about, and then um, you wanted you want to uh, you know tie the whole story together by talking about the impact or what's next for um, you know for the project or for the initiative that you're talking about. So um, yeah, I think a good um, you know a good number to target is um, eight to 10 slides, no more than that, because if it's um, a really large um, um, set of slides and, and you know, we're, we're guilty of doing this with presentations itself, um, you know, any, any more than 10 or any more than 15, you're going to lose the reader's interest. Um, a good um, rule of thumb is sticking to 10 slides using the first couple of slides to introduce your problem, um, set enough context for folks, especially when you're talking of really um, scientific problems or problems that are super um, specific to the community or to the um, location that you're working on, it really helps to be able to 
um, lay some context for folks coming in from a different um, background or a different um, audience to really orient themselves to the issue that you're talking about. And then, um, yeah, like I said, it doesn't hurt to have um, examples that can actually back up um, you know, the problem statement that you're talking about. And um, finally, just um, you know, talking about the impact or talking about what's, what's next when it comes to the um, project or the story that you're featuring. Yeah, um, this is something that I feel that a lot of us don't explore enough. Um, we often get too caught up in um, the content and the media and the photos and the video that we don't really think about um, the unique value, the unique power that Google Earth has, which is um, really the access to different types of um, imagery and different type of map-based data sets. And that's what um, varying your view means. It's really um, diving deep and exploring the different types of um, satellite and street view and 3D imagery data that um, Google Earth has to offer, which um, really makes your story more engaging and immersive. Um, and what I'm going to do next is just walk you through some of the um, quick types of maps that you can leverage in your, um, in your story. So yeah, the first is um, satellite imagery and the by default or the most common um, map that you have, which um, you, know, you can really use, um, like I mentioned, in the first section of a story where you have to um, set context on a place, you have to really introduce the issue, you can think of it as like starting from like the top view and then really going down into like a local or a more um, detailed view when you're actually showing your examples or talking about um, the impact on the ground. Next is um, 3D imagery. We have um, rich visual 3D data for more than 100 different cities across 50 countries um, and it is a great way to showcase major POIs as well as sites of interest. Um, it allows you to get, um, you know, a nice sort of bird's eye or, or you know, like an aerial view of, of a location. You can also um, tilt it so that there's like a focus angle and, you know, you can really use, um, you know, I, I, I just keep thinking of the amazing um, video we saw at the start of the Google Earth product talk and how, um, you know, just, just angles or tilting can actually make a big difference when you're thinking of um, you know, how you're telling your story and how to make the location a little more real. Um, last but not the least, um, Street View, and this is honestly one of the most exciting um, uh, data sets to leverage while telling your story. Um, it gives a very realistic view, um, almost as if the reader is there at that location in person. Um, and you can give them a really immersive view that they can actually walk along, take like a guided journey, or they can, um, you know, hone in on a panel and really um, explore the place, um, yeah, in, in a 360 way. Um, we have almost 500 cities across 100 countries that are covered um, with the Street View data. Um, so yeah, Street View is a really powerful um, visual tool to integrate into your stories. And yeah, this one feels um, a little obvious, but I think we all um, you know, tend to get uh, a little overboard with our photos or videos. Um, what's really important is to um, use them strategically, especially um, in places where um, you know, the map needs a visual element. You can think of, let's say, a story where um, you want to add like a historic map or maybe like a photo of the person tied to the location, or if you want to add um, you know, a, a visual representation of a flower species that, um, you know, you're showcasing in the map um, and you want like a scientific chart to go along with it, um, photos and videos can come um, really handy. Um, and Google Earth allows you to import more than one photos, but it's really important to, um, one, like be mindful of how much content you're throwing at them. You don't want to put a video that's, you know, 30 minutes long. Uh, because then that defeats the purpose of having like a quick engaging story. You maybe want to limit yourself to videos that are a couple of minutes long or um, even shorter and really let the map do all the talking. And yeah, the last um, sort of tip to keep in mind is um, don't forget the map itself. You have um, the view, but um, you know, a great way to really draw the user's attention to a specific 
place or a specific area on the map is to mark up to add polygons or lines or um, you know, draw outlines on the map that really um, draw attention or draw focus to the specific parts or specific areas um, that you want the um, viewer to focus on. Yeah, and, um, oh, I'm sorry, this slide was probably going to come next, but I'll just, <laughs> I'll cover it anyways. Um, yeah, I think um, a really powerful feature, and this was launched last year, is the tile overlay. So earlier um, in the previous session, I talked about data layers. This is actually an amazing way for you to add and bring in your own data. There's actually a few classes. There's one happening right now, so I would highly encourage you to watch the recording, um, which talks about how you can process your data in Earth Engine. Um, and what Tile Overlay allows you to do is um, take the data, um, import, export like a URL, um, which contains um, tiles of the data, and you can really bring it in and import it as a tile overlay, and you can add that as one of the custom layers that you can use um, in your maps and as, as um, an additional feature in your project. Um, so yeah, I highly encourage sort of um, trying it out, especially if you're um, you know, used to Earth Engine and you want to integrate um, Earth Engine data into your, or your analysis or um, you know, your custom maps into, um, into Google Earth. Yeah. So um, the last thing is um, really keep the focus on your audience. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, there can be a few ways to approach it. Either you, uh, you know, your story is geared towards scientists and um, a specific community, then uh, you know, your content is likely to change accordingly. You can keep it um, high level. You can keep your maps more scientific. You can keep, uh, you know, you, you don't have to explain every sort of term. But if you're looking at a broader audience, if you're looking at citizens and communities, you really need um, to think about um, adding in that additional context or adding in um, some additional indicators that make uh, you know, the project or the problem statement that you're trying to describe a little easier um, to digest. And accordingly, you know, the length of your content or um, the modes that you use can definitely change. Like for example, um, if you're, if you're cre creating a data story, um, geared towards scientists, you may want to use like more evidence. You may want to import like more data layers and add in maybe charts and charts in your images. But if it's um, more about the general public, you may want to bring in um, street view so that people can actually look at um, you know sites for their own. Um, you can um, maybe have like explaining diagrams or charts that can really um, help the citizens connect to your story better. So yeah, I think um, just three um, additional tips to sort of summarize um, this is, like I mentioned, keep it um, short, especially the text. We have a tendency to you know, write down everything that we know about that topic. And um, there's a huge long window that Google Earth um, gives us when we create this uh, creator story. So we're like, hey, why don't we fill it all? But um, we strongly advise against that. In fact, um, you know, a short paragraph um, containing no more than four to five lines is the ideal recommended um, size. Um, and the second uh, is, again, depending on your audience, um, keep it conversational. Um, you can, um, again, if, if, if it's a more scientific audience and if you're using it to just like demo your paper at a, at a conference, feel free to, you know, um, use my advanced language, but um, if you're building it for the general audience, um, it is recommended to um, use a more informal tool and maybe even um, you know make it conversational so that it reads as if you're actually taking the user on a journey with you. Um, and yeah, the last is really keeping it informative. Um, the power of maps is that the maps speak for themselves. So. Um, in addition to the maps, if there's anything you can add to explain um, 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 the data on the maps, be it like legends or be it um, you know quick links or blurbs to um, explain what's happening on the map, um, you know you can feel free to use those or embed those in um, in the panel in your story. Okay, so I think that was all of the talking. What we're gonna do now is switch gears and really get you to build your own story. 
And um, I have a tutorial doc which I am going to pull up the link to. Yeah, can uh, I see a few of you are in here already? I'll give you a couple of more minutes to open this link. It's bit.ly, three, capital S, capital D, capital S, small x, small p, and small m. Just give me a thumbs up if you have the tutorial. Awesome, we'll wait just 30 more seconds. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to walk you through how you can build your own story using creation tools. And I will ask you to follow along um, using this tutorial and I'm going to use the same to demonstrate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the data, which is um, just the images that we're going to use just open the link again. Um, you can click on this link and download it. And then we should see an option to unzip. You can't see it on my screen right now because it's on the other screen. But um, yeah, you should see an option to unzip on your computer. Next, we're going to go to Google Earth Web. And this is the main landing view. You can see a small icon here that says projects. We're going to click on that. We'll click on create and select create project in Google Drive. We're going to click on the pencil icon and edit the project title. What you can do is you can just copy it from here like I'm doing. We're basically going to do a story documenting um, Jane Goodall's life and how um, she got to the Gombe Research Station where um, you know, a lot of amazing work happened. We're gonna call this story Jane Goodall's Journey to Gombe. And we're gonna copy the description, click on edit again, and add it here. So this is um, essentially the title and a short summary of what your story is about. Next, we're going to try and add a place. So there's two ways to do this. One is you can add a place directly on the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into the UK and <laughs> 
the clouds were sort of covering it. It was no surprise. And we're going to zoom in till we see Bournemouth. So that is actually where Jane Goodall spent a large part of her childhood. Um, so we're gonna, we see Bournemouth. We're going to, add, we're going to click on this and add a nice little place mark here. And we're going to call it Jane's Childhood. So let's copy the title and paste it in here. So that's it. We've added our first location to our story. And this is really where our story begins, which is right from um, Jane's early days. And I'm also going to teach you how you can change your icon. Maybe we change the size to large. I also wanted to see if there is a nice icon for a book, which, which essentially signifies where she did her schooling or her early learning. And I did that by clicking on the three dots, see more icons. You also have the option to upload a custom icon. There are a few um, specs that you have to follow, but really you can use any icon um, if you want to upload your uh, nonprofit's logo or if you um, want to upload like an authoritative um, source um, logo, you can um, use your own. And you can also go in and change the color. I'm going to make it orange so that it's easy to see. So yeah, that's how you style your marker. And then next we're going to add a place mark using search. So that's the second way and I would say the easiest way to add a place mark. Um, we're just going to exit this for now and click on the search icon. Type in National Museums of Kenya. Click on the first option that you see. and then click on add to project. So what you saw to the right, um, it's a knowledge uh, card or a knowledge panel, and this is pulled directly from um, Google search. And um, it gives like, uh, usually it gives like a, a summary um, pulled from the Google Maps listing of um, what the place actually is. And we're going to replace this with our own um, description and data. Yeah. So for now, we'll just save it. And um, as you can see, there's no save button that you have to hit. Um, all of the edits that you make are automatically saved. Just have, you know, you're not used to hitting save anymore on Google Docs or any of the other tools. So yeah, those are our first two locations. Just to recap, you can add a place by um, searching or by directly adding something on the map. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is add in our content. Um, we're going to add photos, videos, and text. And for the first icon, for the first place mark, we're going to add a photo. So I just clicked on the pencil icon and clicked on edit. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a Google image search and there's a few different ways in which you can add photos. Um, I personally like image search because it's really convenient. You don't have to download any images. You can directly, um, it, Google directly pulls it from the image results. So I'm going to see an image of Bournemouth that I actually like something that's not too beachy. <laughs> They're all mostly beachy. Yeah, I like 
this one. Gives a nice view of the coast. So that's one photo. I'm also gonna add a historic view because I really want um, users to be able to see, um, maybe not that old, but yeah, something, I think this looks closer to time. Yeah, so you can also add multiple images to your story. And then what we're gonna do is we're also going to add text. So this is, um, again, a very short paragraph, um, really allowing the user to connect with Jane Goodall's life while she was growing up. Um, it has like cute little tidbits on what her favorite books were and what she really liked to see that really sparked um, her journey towards um, the work that she was going to do later on in life. And we're gonna copy this and paste it, keeping in mind that this is a rich text editor. So um, if there are any formatting um, details, they're gonna get copied over. So maybe I wanna bold a few things and I wanna italicize all of the titles. And I can also add in hyperlinks if I want it. Weird. Yeah. So you can also add in hyperlinks. Okay. And that's it. If you want to preview, you can click on preview and you can see um, a nice little panel that shows up. And since we added multiple images, it gives you a carousel um, to browse through all of the photo options. If you prefer a larger full panel, you can also select large info box and you can preview and it gets instantly updated. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think this is the text for the first. <laughs> Yeah, we did edit the first one, correct. And then we're going to update the second place mark, the National Museums. And again, um, we're gonna paste. I, uh, a, a quick tip and a quick shortcut is using Command Shift V in case you don't, if you're copying text from somewhere and you don't want um, the formatting to, um, you know, trickle down, you can just use Command Shift V on a Mac. I think I'm gonna keep it a small info box. I'm going to quickly preview. This is a text only panel. And yeah, if we want, we can add, I think we can add a few images from, um, from our folder. So we already have this downloaded. I'm just going to quickly go in and yeah, click on the camera icon, click on upload and click on the unzipped, fi unzipped file door, folder. A nice personal photo of Jane with um, Leakey, Dr. Lewis Leakey, who was the first um, person that she worked with. Yeah, so what it looks like. Okay, um, now I just want to quickly walk you through um, how you can add different views. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add a 3D view to um, the first place mark which features Jane's home. So let's go in here. It 
takes us to Bournemouth. We're gonna zoom quite a bit in so that we get a nice view of the city. I'm gonna click on 3D and I'm going to zoom in so that you get a nice view of the buildings, a little bit of the green area and the coast. And I'm going to clip on, click on capture this view to save this location. And I'll show you how to um, preview this with the view in a bit, but yeah, this is how you add a 3D view and there are a few keyboard shortcuts if you wanna add like tilts and if you wanna add, um, you know, um, different angles, you can use um, the keyboard to sort of adjust your camera view. And then the next we're gonna add um, a place from street view. Before that, we're going to add another place mark Let's search for Gombe National Park. We're going to click on Add to Project, replace this. And the way you add Street View is you click on this Pegman here in the bottom right. And we're gonna zoom out. Um, all of the places where you have street view imagery will show up either as lines. Um, lines means it's connected street view and then you also have dots, which is um, static street view um, tied to a specific location or a point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a nice green spot and we're gonna click on this. And that should give us a street view. I'm gonna set a nice what? nice view of the trail. I'm gonna click on capture this view and that should save it for us. to update our text for this location and just give the users um, context on why Gombe is really important. We're um, going to copy the text from the document and um, again, like no more than four to five lines. Um, it really tells the story of the next part of Jane Goodall's journey and her first visit um, to Gombe, um, how she climbed over the highest peak in search of chimpanzees and um, you know, how a lot of her um, foundational work, understanding the behavior of chimpanzees was set in Gombe and why it's so critical to, the place is so critical to her journey. And let's pick large info box and you can see the panel showing up here. Next, we're going to try to add a video. So, just copy this term because it's going to come in handy. So you can click on the same camera icon and you can actually use it to add a video as well. Um, you can click on YouTube and look up a video on YouTube. Um, yeah. I think we can, I like this video because it's under a minute. And I'm just gonna quickly show you. When you click on play, it opens up into this full screen mode. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have our story ready, I'm just gonna quickly show you what the story looks like. Um, you can click on preview 
and it immediately goes into presentation mode and you have these nice sort of flyovers that actually zoom in. Um, they transition out from your starting place and then um, you know zoom into the first place mark and really settle in on the view. So we picked a 3D view here and that's what I mean, the, the flyover animation took us to, um, but it's still available as an interactive map in case you know, your audience wants to play around with it. So um, think of that as well, not only the view that you want to bring users into, but also um, the, the um, elements that you want them to be able to interact with. So the next one is um, just a simple satellite view, which zones in on the place mark. And again, there's a nice flyover tying both um, of the locations together. And the last one is really a street view. So it actually goes in from the satellite view um, and then enters the street view and um, users can again still interact with the panel even though it opens up with the view that you actually um, chose to first enter from. And um, again, you can click on the video and play it as well. I'm just gonna exit. And that's pretty much it. Um, the last thing I wanna, um, I, I won't um, go into a hands-on tutorial, but I just wanna quickly call your attention. Um, we covered like adding place marks, but you can also add um, a line or a polygon. Um, to indicate different types of features. So um, one great example uh, relevant to this story is um, really drawing a line that traces like the boat journey between um, Kigoma to the resource station in Gombe. And um, when you draw a line, the camera actually like chases over the um, line itself. So it can be a nice like simulation of like the journey or of the um, feature that you want to sort of highlight in your story. Um, in next, you can also um, mark an area. So uh, here you can draw like a nice polygon around the research station in Gombe to really um, um, draw users' attention on, um, you know, within a map, what is a specific area that um, Jane Goodall actually spent a lot of her time in. Yeah, and you can also update the styling. You can change the opacity um, and also the thickness of the boundary. Um, and last but not the least, um, you can also add slides. So if you, if you have a longer story, if you want to section it off um, into maybe like a chapter one, chapter two, um, you can use the full screen slide mode, which is um, what this looks like. Um, and I think I often like to use it as just the starting or the introductory page for my story. So that you can start off with like a nice photo, you can see, uh, you can add the title, you can add a short description and then um, you know, then then sort of start um, your story. So yeah, those are the main features. One last thing I wanted to bring your attention to is um, just the share button. So just like Google Docs, you can um, add people, you can add other editors, you can um, make this, um, currently I can only share it with people within my org, but ideally you should also be able to make this link public so that you can share your story um, with others and um, you know other folks can sort of um, add on and view your story. Okay, so, so just a quick recap of um, you know the steps. Um, I'm only gonna spend like 10 seconds each um, quickly showcasing some additional examples. So this is a really nice um, example of um, uh, the journey of a nonprofit to restore uh, the Mississippi River Delta. And it's a nice combination of sort of like a, a guided tour that I was telling you about that actually um, walks um, people through, you know, different locations where um, th that were of significance to this project. and. Um, really, it, it, it's a nice sort of in, informative come um, storytelling, um, uh, you know, story guide. Um, and this was again created in creation tools, so you can also see like the difference between the examples I showed you earlier in Voyager um, versus the examples in creation tools that 
um, you know, are, are not, I would say, not as sophisticated. Um, this is an uh, amazing um, sort of fictional example. So um, a lot of times when you think of, think of maps, we limit ourselves to um, real stories or reports, but this is like a, I mean, I, I don't want to say fictional, sorry, I meant historical. So this is a nice like historical story that, um, that was demonstrated um, using, um, um, using Google Earth, where um, the story of Henry Box and how he, um, his journey to freedom um, in 1849. Um, and again, you can, you can go along, there's a theme here, you can go along with this user, this character, and trace their journey um, as it happened um, through history. Um, and this is a great example for education. Um, you know, you can um, think of stories um, also for kids or for different audiences is a nice um, example of tying sustainable architecture and actually demonstrating real life buildings that um, can tie to a, like a fun, um, you know, educational lesson or a fun, um, you know, example where um, kids can um, see raw life buildings and see how how the area or how the volume or how um, you know the shape itself has an has a bearing on um, you know the energy consumption or um, um, you know a, a other sort of environmental um, factors that impact the structure itself. And um, yeah, this is actually um, an example closer to <laughs> where I'm from, but. Um, this is a nice combination of like data um, used to sort of validate a myth, or uh, I wouldn't say a myth, more like a fable, where um, you know during the monsoons it is um, it is often um, sort of um, depicted that the pied cuckoo predicts um, or for foretells um, you know the monsoon or the rain season. So one of our users actually um, took in bird sighting data and tied it with sort of weather and precipitation data from Earth Engine and really did like a nice. Uh, blending of two different data sets to um, introduce, um, you know, both the pied cuckoo and the monsoon season and how they actually end up sort of overlapping where, um, you know, the bird sightings are, are seen as a forecast or as a prediction to um, monsoons in certain parts of India. Um, so yeah, this is again like a nice sort of data science come sort of um, story example. And this is um, you know, a, a sort of uh, an interesting example where a life feed was actually used um, to tell a story and to raise awareness about um, sort of brown bears. And um, it, it's a nice example of um, having really like a real time story that um, has a feed, maybe like a YouTube live stream feed or a different feed, which can actually, which users can sort of um, uh, see and follow along and at the same time also learn about um, the species um, as an as an addition to you know the the live feed that they're watching on the map. Um, and the last um, is um, you know this is home um, again. This is a great example to um, educate a wider audience on your culture on um, combining like different examples from across the globe and um, traditional homes and really more of a collection that we saw earlier. Um, where you know um, different types of homes are tied tied by a common theme, and they're all grouped grouped into like a nice um, story to educate the end user. And lastly, this is more of a mixed audio um, media um, story, which is celebrating indigenous languages. Um, so this is a really large exercise and connection where we. Um, interviewed a lot of indigenous community members. Uh, we actually recorded how they speak different words in their languages, um, like a greeting or like um, you know a memory that's really cherished by them. And um, we've em embedded those audio clips along with um, like a brief um, summary of the language or you know a brief history about the participant themselves, um, and really celebrated the voices and celebrated the languages that are often lost in like a multi uh, you know multimedia format. Um, just to um, you know, recap something that you're gonna um, that was shared in the parallel session um, and in the product session earlier, um, we are updating Google Earth um, big time in a UI that supports um, better project making and um, allows you to really um, bring some of the power of Earth Pro into Google Earth. So we highly recommend that you. Um, sign up to uh, get trusted tester access. I think if you're already registered, you should all 
um, have access, but just a preview that this is coming. And um, if you want to learn more about how to um, participate and how to, um, you know, make use of these features, you can attend the two sessions happening here. So there's one. Uh, the, both of the sessions are happening tomorrow at 11.30 and 1.45. Um, one is track four and track five. It's called a sneak peek at what's coming next in Google Earth. And then you, using Google Earth in the field, you can both, um, you can try your um, hands firsthand at, at these new features in both of these sessions. And um, apologies, we <laughs> um, uh, finished dot on the time because we started a little late, but um, if you have any questions, I think we have a couple of minutes. If not, I'm also um, around in case any of you have any questions and you have anything to ask. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can we have the mic, please? Did you have, who, was a, who had a question? You did? Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to know. Is there an option where I can have a voiceover? As in, when I'm finished doing all that nice work, can I, is it embedded in that I can record a voice? Or do I, as I show my audience, do I speak? Yeah, um, unfortunately there's no like easy way to add a voiceover. Um, yeah, I think it currently at least it requires that you sort of accompany um, uh, it with like an audio narrative or you sort of make it self-serve so that an uh, a audio narrative is not required. Um, I think Josh Williams in some of his templates did um, try to find out a way to work around this and see if you know there's, there's an audio, um, like an automatic audio that can be added. So um, I, can, I can share a link to his templates if that helps, but it requires a bit of like JavaScript and CSS and a little bit of code. There's no like push a button and um, updated way to add a voiceover, unfortunately. Yeah, just, just to expand on that a little bit, um, there is an audio tag in HTML that you can use to do voiceovers when a balloon is opened. Uh, but in order to do that, you'll have to use the HTML editing mode and not the template editing mode. So it means you'll have to apply the styles yourself to the balloons. And that's what Josh Williams typically does. Yeah. Hi, Devaja, three questions for you. So the first one with the mobile web and um, desktop cross mapping, um, for in the field, can um, the place marks be done without internet, um, tying it to Earth Project? So that's the first question. Um, the second question is on, you know how with Voyager, we do a lot of like quizzes and time-lapse data, and that's all really <laughs> like nice and pretty. Um, are, are there plans to incorporate this into creation tool? Yeah, awesome. Those are great questions. <laughs> Um, the first one, um, I believe in order to save a, a project, a, a place mark, um, because it's tied to your Google Drive, you still need um, an internet to save um, the place mark, uh, internet connection to save the place mark data. Um, to your second question, um, some of the data visualization is possible through tile layers. So um, if you have a time series or like a nice visualization that you can uh, bring in from Earth Engine, you can enable it. Um, if you want to directly use the time lapse layer, unfortunately, that's still like a Voyager layer, so there's no way to bring that. Um, you can't bring that into the project directly, but yeah, I'm guessing that the team's um, sort of working to <laughs> um, allow you to use more and more of the existing data in Google Earth, so hopefully soon. <laughs> oh, because we're recording. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, I don't know if she had touched upon it already, but with regards to, uh, you mentioned the template for uh, asking like quiz questions. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good call out. So um, yeah, Josh Williams, one of um, the community members has already created a template for um, quiz. I think I can, um, what I'll do is these slides will be live and I can, under resources, I can just add a link to the um, template that Josh Williams use. And yeah, you can, you can pretty much use that and make your own quiz. Um, yeah, Josh is, Josh is amazing. <laughs> yep. 
Hi, thank you for the presentation. So is it possible now to like, you know, take this video and put it in our website if we do it? Like, how do we do it? Because in the past, yeah. it was not possible. Um, unfortunately, embed is still not um, supported. Um, yeah, the only way to do it is just paste a link and um, people can open it up. Um, yeah, embed is still not supported. things we are talking about, can they become like feature requests? Is that, yeah. Uh, can you have a wish list? Can yeah. We wish? Yeah, I think th this is great <laughs> feedback. And what I can do is I already remember like a bunch of these things that we have asked. So I'm going to make a note and um, pass it on to the product team as so, feature requests or so feedback. Next time we can hold you accountable. We ask you. <laughs> well. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm sorry, folks, we're out of time, but um, I'm happy to take more questions. I'll be outside. We have to clear this up for the next session. But thank you so much, everyone.